Hey YouTube, I've spent the last couple of days walking around Oslo, and it's a beautiful city, but I'm not going to be here for too much longer because I'm heading south, and I'm going to try to end up in Switzerland by next weekend. And that's where you come in. I want to ask your advice on places I should go, people I should see, things I should do. I have a URL pass and I will travel. So if you want to make some suggestions, you can put them in the comment section below, or you can tweet at me at Veritasium, or send me a good old-fashioned email, veritasium at gmail.com. Now before I leave Scandinavia, I wanted to share with you some of the things I would learned from around here. Number one, Norway is not cheap. That haircut lasted about 15 minutes, but cost over $100. And it threw off my whole hair to beard ratio, so I've had to pick up some clippers so I can trim this thing back. Number two, rock climbing is a lot harder than it looks. This is my first attempt at outdoor rock climbing. And it's not easy, but at least I was climbing something that was actually meant to be climbed. Number three, Norwegians have weird words for things. You know what I'm curious about is why the orange juice says apples and juice. So the reason for that is that in Norwegian, apelsin actually means apples from China. That's where your <laughs> no origin. way. Yeah, yeah. No way. Yep. So oranges are apples from China. Yes. So do you guys have this expression in Norwegian which would be like, that's just like comparing apples and apples in China. <laughs> No, we don't. <laughs> Number four, and speaking of words, I've learned a couple things from Latin. I never studied that in school. Okay, so the Latin word ad means to, as in I'm going to the store. But if you want to write that in a little bit of a fancy way, you could write the A with the D around it. And then if you get lazy, you could just leave off the long line of the D and you have an at symbol. That's pretty cool. I never knew that. Now the Latin word for and is et, E-T. It's the same as the French, A. And you can write that as E-T, or you could write it as an E with a T on the top. And if you get tired of doing it that way, you might like to do it all in one line, and then you'd have the ampersand. That's pretty cool, because that's a strange looking symbol, and I never knew where it came from. Now I know. Now I've had a great time in Scandinavia. I started off in Uppsala, which is just north of Stockholm in Sweden, and I was hanging out with the author of Conceptual Physics, Paul Hewitt, and the whole physics education research group at Uppsala University. While I was there, I got to see the original Celsius thermometer, and that was really cool, so look forward to a video on Veritasium coming up about that. One last thing, if you haven't seen my audition for TED yet, please click on the annotation and go check it out. Uh, there's less than two weeks before they close the rating and comments. Uh, that'll be on August 31st. So please, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, and uh, if you like, spread it, send it to your friends, tweet it. That would be great. All right. I hope to see you in Europe. And if not, I'll catch you on the flip side.